Thank you everyone so much for coming to our second Tuffy's Top Tips webinar. We're so happy to have you all here. Feel free to say hey in the chat. We have a lot of OLs here um, ready to interact with you and answer your questions and all those sorts of things. Um, before I get started, I'll introduce myself. My name is Kayla Ward and I'm a NOTA graduate intern for Titan Orientation Programs this summer. And I am helping our wonderful orientation leaders put on these webinars for you. Um, Tuffy's Top Tips webinars are all geared toward your student experience. Um, so they'll talk about their own experiences and gives you some, give you some tips and tricks um, on being on CSUF campus. And this one in particular is going to be about commuter student tips and tricks. But honestly, for any type of student, there's a lot of good information here that we think you should all know. Um, before we get too deep into it, I'll go over some logistical things with you. Uh, there is a chat feature and a Q&A feature. So if you have a question of any sort, you should put that in the Q&A feature. And it's easier for us to keep track of your answers and other people can see that questions have already been asked and what the answers to those were. So if you have questions, please put those in the Q&A. And if you just want to say hey or um, make a comment or start a side conversation, you can use the chat feature for that. Um, and we would love for you to do that as well. So if you want to put questions in the Q&A feature and just some conversations in the chat, we would love that. Um, we will be recording this webinar and uploading it to our Titan Orientation Program's YouTube channel. Um, usually takes about a week to get uploaded. So that will be there for your convenience later on if you want to refer back to some of these tips later. We're going to use the last 30 minutes of our time together for our panelists to answer questions that we have some for them ready, but if you have questions that you want the panelists to answer, we'll have some time for that at the end as well. So, um, and you can put those in the Q&A if you have any questions you'd like to post to the group. So those are just a few logistics. Um, before we get right into the presentation, I'd like to open it up for introdu introductions for our presenters and our panelists. So uh, Marianne, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Hello everyone, my name is Marianne Arcos and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am currently moving on to my third year as a mathematics major, concentration in education. At Cal State Fullerton, I am part of TOPS, which stands for Tide and Orientation Programs, and I serve as a student coordinator, and I'm also part of Tide and Future Teachers. Next, we'll have Elisa. Hi everybody, my name is Elisa Ruiz. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm going into my third year at CSUF, which is crazy. I'm a communications major with a concentration in public relations. I also have a philosophy minor and a marketing minor. And something I'm involved with on campus is uh, I'm currently an executive board member for our school's PRSSA chapter, which is Public Relations Student Society of America. And with that, I'll pass it along to Gabby. Hi everybody, my name is Gabby, my pronouns are they, them. I'm a third year transfer student um, at Cal State Fullerton. I am a psych major. I've been involved with the Latinx Student Psychological Association, as well as the Humanities and Social Sciences Inner Club Council. And of course, best of all tops. Um, I'll go ahead and pass it off to Val. Hello everyone, I wanna thank you all again personally for joining us. My name is Valerie Salazar. I will be a sophomore this upcoming fall semester and my major is biochemistry. In campus, I am involved in the biochemistry club as well as a Titan student orientation leader. Now I'll go over to Carl now. Hi everyone, what's up? My name is Carl, pronouns are he and his. I'm a biology major going to my fourth year. And a few things I'm involved in campus is that I'm part of student government, which is called Associate Students Incorporation at CSUF. And um, I'll be um, the board directors for natural science and mathematics. And I'm, I'm also part of a professional biology fraternity here on campus as well. So yeah. Awesome, thank you. They'll be our presenters for the day. And we also like to introduce our panelists and our chat facilitators. Hey everyone, my name is Sammy Sanchez. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm going into my fourth year as a psychology student. I'm also involved in the research department in the psychology department. And of course, I'm an orientation leader. I'll pass it off to Taylor. Hey everybody, my name is Taylor. I am currently going on my second year at Cal State Fullerton for this fall. I am currently studying computer science, probably might add another major in there, who knows. And something I'm involved in campus is the WISE program, which is Women in Computer Science and Engineering. 
as well as the Titan Orientation Programs, also known as TOPS, which, we, which is who we are right now. I'll pass it off to Greg. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm a criminal justice major as well as a philosophy major here at Cal State Fullerton. I'm a fifth year, and some involvements I have are being part of the Criminal Justice Student Association, as well as the Pre-Law Society, and best of all, I am a Titan Orientation Leader. And I'll pass it off to Estefania. Hi everyone, my name is Stephania. I'm a third year liberal studies major. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, my campus involvement includes Titan Future Teachers, Best Buddies, and being a part of the Titan Fund team here on campus as well as an orientation leader. I'll head on um, and pick me next. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ming Wang and I just graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in music with a minor in marketing. So uh, some of my campus involvement included uh, like serving as your orientation leader last summer as well as this summer. I was also a telephone interviewer at our social science research center and I also asked uh, sang in a lot of choirs in Cal State Fullerton. So next I will pass it on to Jessica. Thank you Ming, my name is Jessica Torres. I'm going into my fourth year on campus. My pronouns are she, her, hers. My major is communications with an emphasis in public relations. Some campus involvements I have are being a part of PRSSA as an active member, being an orientation leader, and also being a part of the Creative Writing Club on campus. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll revisit our panelists at the end again to answer all your questions. Um, but without further ado, I will pass it off to Elisa to get us introduced for our presentation for the day. Hi again. Okay, so we understand that we're going virtual this upcoming semester, but we believe that these tips would be great to share with you when we go back to campus safely. Um, and while commuting can be a hassle, we hope that what we share with you today can help you get through the semester when you do start commuting. Okay, so we'll move on to the next slide. So there are many ways that you can commute to campus and we will be going over most of these on this slide. And we encourage you to find the way that best works for you. And so now I'm going to pass it over to Gabby to tell you the ins and outs of parking structures. Hi, everybody. So one of the main places that you can park on campus are in one of the three parking structures that we have. Um, so the first parking structure that we have is the State College parking structure. Awesome. So um, the State College parking structure is right off of State College Boulevard. Um, it's nearby the Student Recreation Center, the Titan Student Union, as well as the Kinesiology and Health Sciences Building. Uh, the, State uh, the State College parking structure, um, like all of the other parking structures on campus, have um, the first floor, which is filled with pay to park um, spot so if you're only on campus for an hour or two hours it might be more convenient for you to pay to park on the first floor instead of um, going up on the other floors um, the first floors of all the parking structures also have motorcycle parking so if you do have a motorcycle permit you can park on the first floor of all the parking structures as well um, the state college parking structure is great because it's often the last parking structure to fill up on the day um, in the mornings for morning classes. Um, so I would recommend arriving by like 8.45, 9 a.m. to get a spot um, if you're looking for like those like 10 a.m. classes. Um, the great thing about this structure is it has six floors. Um, the sixth floor does not have an elevator though. So the elevator only goes up to the fifth floor. So if you're somebody that uses an elevator, make sure to park on the first five floors of State College. The next parking structure that we have is the Nutwood parking structure. Um, so this one is right off of Nutwood. Um, so you can take the freeway exit to get on Nutwood and then it's right there. Um, this one is by the Visual Arts Building, the Clay Performing Arts Center, as well as the Science Buildings, McCarthy Hall and Dan Black Hall. Um, the parking truck or Nutwood parking structure normally fills up in the mornings for people's morning classes and then it'll start to empty around 1 p.m. and there'll be like a huge line that goes all the way around the building trying to get out of Nutwood. So I would definitely recommend if you can 
to either leave before or after that rush hour so you don't get stuck in long lines. So if you're just trying to leave for lunch, try to walk to lunch or eat on campus rather than leaving and then coming back because you'll get stuck in those lines or just hang out for an hour after your class gets out so that the traffic kind of dies down a little bit. Um, this one is the largest structure. It has 2,439 spots. It's got five floors. All of them have an elevator. Um, it's also Kind of like the prettiest because it's got like a big glass with like Cal State Fullerton. It's cute. People take pictures in front of it. You'll see it. Um, and then the next one is the east side parking structure. So east side is always the one that fills up first because it's nearby the academic, the two largest academic colleges, the Humanities and Social Sciences building, Mahalo Hall, and then Langsdorf and Gordon Hall. Um, so this one, if you're trying to get close to east side, I would recommend arriving by like 745. And especially during the first couple of weeks of class, 745 might be cutting it close. The cool thing about Eastside, though, is that it's right near Aloha Java. So when you're walking from Eastside to your classes, you're going to pass by the best coffee on campus. So even if you arrive early, you have time to like get a coffee, hang out, study over there. Um, another cool tip for especially Eastside, because this one's like always full, is hanging out by the elevator might seem like it's faster. Um, so you'll see like a bunch of cars parked by the elevator and then when people come out they'll try to grab like their spot and be like hey are you leaving um that might seem faster but it can actually get you a ticket and normally it's way easier to just drive around and find somebody leaving than like hanging out and leaving your car idle by the elevators okay so lastly we have lot a through f and um, while this is the furthest parking lot, this is usually the last place to fill up. So you're most likely to find uh, a parking spot here in a pinch. Um, there is assisted parking in, in these lots, uh, which I'll go over. And assisted parking allows vehicles to park behind other cars after all spaces in a parking lot has been filled. And it increases the amount of cars able to park in the parking lot. And uh, this is available Monday through Thursday in Lot A, Lot A South, Lot E, Lot S, and Titan Hall South. Uh, attendants will begin parking vehicles at 8.30 a.m. and they're able to return keys until 10 p.m. But after 10 p.m., if you haven't gotten your key back, um, you can go to our University Police Department, show them your ID, and then you can get your key back. Um, these lots are really close to the Fullerton Arboretum and the Student Recreation Center, which we'll talk about later as well. And it's also close to the baseball stadium, uh, student housing, and our children's center for our students that are parents. Um, if you want more information about our children's center, you should check out the Associate Students Incorporated website. And it, the website is asi.fullerton.edu forward slash children's dash center. And with that, uh, I'll put I'll uh, hand to Val to talk about parking permits. Hello again. So next, I will be talking about parking permits. They are very important and very useful if you want to park in any of our lots. So in any of our lots, they you need a parking permit. So you used to be able to purchase a parking permit in person and online, but now it's just online. So you can find it on our website on Fullerton's website, specifically on parking.fullerton.edu, or you can purchase it through your student portal. So what kind of permits are there? There's many different um, permits offered uh, for purchase. So one, uh, which the popular one is the semester one. Of course, that's the one, the pretty, pretty pricier one. You can also do daily permits for $10. There's also a uh, choice for motorcycle permits, as well as satellite parking permits. A satellite parking permit is a, another cheaper alternative. That one is about two miles off campus. It's a, in a church and you have to ride the shuttle. It, it takes you, but you could park your car there. So once you want to get ready to purchase your parking permit, just make sure that you have all the necessities you need. It asks you about um, your license plate number or your VIN vehicle number. Um, also, the make and model of your vehicle. So just get um, all that information ready for when, whenever you want to register your vehicle and you're ready to buy your parking permit. So the parking permit will come in the mail and then just make sure that you put it in your car where it's visible whenever you want to park there. And for further questions, um, you can contact parking at fullerton.edu. 
You can ask them any questions. Also, there's the phone number down there on the bottom right of the screen. So you can use that as well. Okay, so you didn't get a spot. Um, that's okay. Uh, the main thing to do is just breathe because we all know things happen. Um, but I did want to talk about the iFullerton app, which I have found really helpful in the past. Um, if you download the iFullerton app, you'll see that there's a lot of icons on the screen. One of the icons has a car and it says parking on the bottom. And that icon will bring up each name for uh, the different uh, parking lots and parking structures we have on campus and it'll also say how many spots are available or if the lot is full and I've definitely found that helpful if I'm running late and I just need to figure out which where I can even leave my car and something I did do in the past was I figured out my friend's schedule and so we would trade off parking spots so when she would finish uh, her classes or her work that she had to do then um, I would be in my car waiting for her to uh, come to get her parking spot and she'd move out and I'd move in and we'd switch back and forth because we knew each other's schedules and we'd wait for each other and make sure each one was able to get a spot. But uh, I don't know. There's definitely a lot of ways that you could get around it. Um, definitely talk to your friends about it too. And with that, I'll hand it over to Carl. All right, hello everyone. So I apologize for the little lag. But yeah, so for the past three years, I've done so many different ways to uh, come to school, like such as carpooling. Uh, before um, before this was offered, I used carpool with just my friend, but now this this is really a great tool or, or service to use because um, this carpool service now is through Waze. And what's really cool about this one is that in Lot D, near State College actually, um, there's a, there's a Preserve, it says preserve spot for you for a certain time. So only people who carpool can only you could only park there. So definitely that, that saves you time and um, that, that, that saves you walking like really far, right? Um, and then if you like have more questions, you can use either the, like, the Waze app or go to CSU web um, sign carpoolers Waze sign up page. And then the next one, Oh, okay, cool. And then for the next one is the Zipcar car, uh, car Share. This one I really haven't used before because this is fairly recent. And what what's really not neat about this one is that for the for this service, you're able to rent a car for for I believe an hour or like a day, and you don't have to own that car. You don't, I don't I believe you don't have to pay insurance. It's just an easier way just to drive to and from campus or to somewhere like um like like a local restaurant. So it's really cool because you don't have to have a car. It saves your resources for that. And then, nice one, cool. And then the this last one I really enjoyed a lot. Th this is the MetroLink slash train, and this is through the Orange County Transportation Authority. And what's really cool about this one is that if you're a CFCF student, you're able to have a 25% off the MetroLink account. So so that gives you an access to have a MetroLink card or an OCTA card, and you're able to show um. The, the people on the train or on the bus and you're able to ride the bus for free as long as you have that membership. What's really cool is that in downtown Fullerton, there's, there's actually a station where you're able to, you're able to park your car in your home to um, campus. If you want to drive to downtown Fullerton and if you want to take the bus from there, it's really nice and simple because you don't have to wait for, you don't, you don't have to wait for people to leave the parking lot and you, you don't have to find parking on campus. So, so that saves you some time. And if you have any more questions of when and where the bus is and when it will leave, just uh, visit MetroLink and they should have the whole schedule out there for you. So, yeah. So one of the great things about commuting is that you'll have time between classes. So maybe you have a class that ends at 10 a.m. and your next class doesn't start until 1130. Um, you don't want to go home because you might live far and you don't want to lose that awesome parking spot you got at 730 in the morning. So one of the many things you can do is start getting involved on campus. Um, so we have tons of clubs and student organizations that have meetings throughout the day. Um, it's a great way to meet friends and um, kill time between classes. So um, a really great way that you can learn about what different organizations are having meetings um, is through Titan link and we'll put the link for that in the chat um, but you can learn more about um, different organizations especially those within your major and so it's a great way to just like find some friends and then kill some time between classes so that you don't have to go home 
Um, another great thing is the Titan Student Union. So a lot of times people will just hang out in the Titan Student Union between classes. Um, they have a food court, they have patios, they have a Starbucks. Um, they have a ton of spaces to study and hang out like billiards and bowling. Um, and it's just a great way to hang out on campus without having to kind of like commit to doing something. Um, and then we also have the library. Uh, so the library has rooms that are available for study groups that you can reserve, um, as well as places that are just for socializing, like the DERC, which is the Diversity Initiatives Resource Center. Um, those are like identity based groups um, for uh, we have like the Latinx Community Resource Center or the LGBTQ Resource Center. So places that you can kind of um, meet people that may share your identity and socialize and make friends there. And then I'll go ahead and hand it off to Val, who's going to talk about food. Okay, so let's say you have a lot of extra time in between classes or you get there a little early, a great way to um, waste a bit of time or you can also study at our, on, on these places on campus, these food places you can do um, indoor, there's outdoor as well. Indoor, we have the gastronomy meal plans, we have Langsdorf Hall Express and the Nutwood Cafe outdoors such as Carl's Jr. There's also a lot of food trucks that come many of days of the week. There's a, T, a TSU, also short for Titan Student Union, has Panda Express, it has Togo's, Hibachi San, it also has a Juice It Up as well. And then there's also off-campus restaurants, places to eat. So there's Asian food like Thai basil, Noodle Street, uh, Plain Broiler, there's Mexican food like Pepe's, Chipotle, Ensenada Surf and Turf Grill. There's American food like Witch Witch, They Have It, Panera Bread, Pyology. Also the TSU, as mentioned before, also has a lot of tables um, and microwaves. So if you want to bring your own food as well, you can sit there and study in as well or do anything, whatever you want. Just hang out with your friends as well. So another thing back to the parking passes, I know um, it can be a little pricey or I know that sometimes or now with uh, classes transitioning online, you might not go to campus as often. So you don't want to buy a parking pass. Another alternative, um, what I would do, I commuted all of my first um, year at Cal State Fullerton. So what I did, I didn't want to buy a parking permit. So I would park by College Park. It's one, It's a street called College Place. It's by the university's um, apartments and you don't need a parking pass it just gets filled up really quickly so i would leave about two and a half to three hours before my first class just to make sure i would get a spot there and then just either hang out in my car or go eat and study so that's a great alternative for um not wanting to get a parking pass since maybe you might not go to um, campus often or if you're just involved in anything um, that's a great way to um, and park there as well. So I'll hand it over now. All righty now. So we're going to move on to the questions for the panelists. The first question that we have is How do you handle fatigue during long drives? I can definitely answer that. I currently commute around 45 minutes to an hour. I come from Chino, so it's kind of long, it's not a long drive, it's just, it gets long with traffic. So of course, fatigue is a common thing with me. Um, some personal things I do, I definitely have to have a very good playlist. I swear I have like little karaoke sessions in my car to kind of get me through traffic because sometimes traffic on that 57 freeway can be so bad. Um, and also just sometimes maybe making something to eat in the morning, or just if I don't have time to make something to eat, like the our presenter said, there's many options around Cal State Fullerton, like the Aloha Java. Sometimes I find myself getting something around there, which is so good in the morning. And then also Cal State Fullerton has three Starbucks on campus. So I'm completely in trouble every time I go on campus because I love Starbucks. So sometimes just, you know, playlists or coffee or something to eat always helps during long drives. Yeah, and um, I come from uh, Corona, which is an hour, hour drive, hour plus, depending on traffic on the 91 freeway. So that's, that's rough. And the way I deal with handling fatigue is just, you know, just like Taylor said, grabbing 
some iced coffee, grabbing coffee, grabbing a drink, you know, just grabbing food because it really just takes your mind off of sitting in traffic for like the extra 30, 45 minutes. It just makes it um, good all around. So my commute isn't nearly as long as some other people's in this group. I live in Whittier, which is on a good day, like 30 minutes, 45 on a bad. Um, however, I do wake up super early so I can grab parking spot. Um, so my long drive is just the process of getting up in the morning and getting there. So the way I deal with that is um, I keep a little blanket in my car. I'll lock my doors and I'll take a quick nap before I have to head on campus and uh, go to class. Alrighty then. The second question is, how do you make sure you are on time to all of your classes? I can answer that. Um, definitely, because I park on the east side parking structure. I'm guilty um, of parking there. I try to wake myself up really early knowing that traffic will probably be really bad in the morning and when I wake up really early I try to plan a schedule of like what time I think I'll get there one thing I use a lot especially for um, checking traffic and stuff is the google maps or just your maps on your iphone it can predict like what time you'll get there get to like school and stuff so I try to plan my uh, morning routine around that and then if I get there really early, I have some time and to just sit in my car, maybe listen to some music, study for a test, or um, even sleep even. You'll, at Cal State Fullerton, you'll see some people in the morning taking naps in their cars. I am probably one of those who's guilty of that as well. Um, but yeah, just setting a good uh, morning schedule, probably using resources like Google Maps or the Maps uh, app on your phone does help. Uh, make sure that I'm on time for classes. Yeah, and, uh, Taylor said it perfectly, you know, just mapping out, having that schedule, but on days for um, important classroom events, such as finals, midterms, quizzes, presentations, just make extra sure that you add an extra bit of time to your commute, mark it on your calendar, be aware of these important events because you don't want to be late and um, in a rush during uh, one of these uh, events, such as finals or a presentation. Yeah, also I'll say about leaving about two and a half to three hours before your class, it's pretty good to make sure you find a parking spot. They do get filled up pretty quickly. And again, if you don't have a parking pass, you definitely want to find that parking and make sure that um, you'll be on time. Does anyone else would like to answer this question? Okay, so the next question is, how do you find a person to carpool with? can grab that. Um, so like I said, I came from a town that's not that far from Fullerton. So I was, I guess, blessed enough to know a few people who were attending. And uh, we're all kind of from the same area. So knowing those people from high school, or even if you're coming, if you're a transfer from a, a local college, you can try to find people who you maybe had a class with or like you knew through a friend, and just see what their commute looks like. And if they're planning on carpooling and that way you all save gas, you all save money parking. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend connecting with people you have had connections with before because that ultimately benefit all of y'all. And yeah, like Carl said, the Waze app is a great app to um, use and try to find people to carpool with at Cal State Fullerton. But just another just tip is people that are in your classes, just talk to people, try to find someone um, in the time frame of your classes, because most of the time do you, uh, people have the, if they're in the morning class, they obviously have the same schedule as you. So just talk to people. Don't be afraid to get out there, you know, ask. And even if your schedule's on the line perfectly, like if you're one or two or three hours out, you know, you could use that time to study. And because carpooling is just, it saves money, it saves time. And it's just a great benefit for everyone. Um, so, yeah. All right. And the next question is, what are the ways that I can connect with other students, both commuters and residential? So involvement is great and I encourage everyone who is commuting to reach out to the clubs and try to make friends and get involved in campus. Um, driving to campus and leaving after class could seem a bit mundane, you know, just driving back and forth. It seems boring and it, it feels like college doesn't have much to offer, but 
um, once you make friends, once you make the effort to get involved, put a, uh, like one, two, three hours more into your um, time at school, you'll you'll get the results and you'll just definitely enjoy the student life at Cal State Fullerton. And as Gabby was saying, um, a lot of students, uh, they'll kind of bond in the library. Like there's a lot of people who think like, oh, it's weird to start a conversation with someone you know, but I've met some of my closest friends in the library and it, it starts off as small talk. It starts off as like awkward, but like once you like establish these connections and be like, oh yeah, what's your class schedule? And it's, everyone goes to the library. So you're gonna find commuters and residential students um, so that's one way that I was able to connect with others, other people. Also during, uh, for some clubs and organizations, sometimes depending on the size of the club organization, they might uh, accommodate to your time to, uh, for, for commuting, such as like, let's say you can't make like a five o'clock PM meeting, they'll might move it up, but they might move it um, earlier. So it just depends. Okay, so that concludes the section for questions for panelists. Now let's move on. Awesome. Yeah, as Marianne said, that, those are all the set questions we had for our panelists right now. But if you have any questions that you want to ask the panelists, please feel free to put those in the Q&A. Um, we'd be happy to answer them here. It doesn't have to specifically be related to anything that we discussed during a presentation or whatnot. If you have just a, a side question that you want to ask, those are okay too. So any other questions you want to ask now, we can answer here. And then also I'll say while um, people are thinking of some questions up on the screen here is our contact information. So on the bottom right is our social media, specifically our Instagram we're really active on and that's where we will give um, registration links for all the webinars like these. Um, you can follow that at, at CSUF orientation and find the registration links for our upcoming webinars as well. We have one on Wednesday and then the next week, Monday and Wednesday as well. Um, but we also have uh, Titan Orientation Programs is doing a podcast. You can do one-on-one -on -one discussion questions or discussion groups with um, other orientation leaders if that's something you're interested in. So you should hover, head over to the Instagram and check those out. Um, if you had a specific question about orientation, you could ask um, or send that question to the orientation email on the bottom left. And we have somebody to, there to answer your questions as well. And then also there's a lot of information that I would definitely recommend checking out first at the fullerton.edu slash orientation website. So those are all good resources to utilize. I see one and I think it'd be a good one to ask if the panelists could answer, you know, why they chose CSUF and some things that maybe they're excited about for the upcoming semester. I think that'd be fun too grab that um so i was going between uh cal state fullerton and ucla um i always like cal state fullerton because it's proximity to my house and it has a great psychology program but ucla i always saw as like my dream school but, like when it came down to it i was like okay which one is gonna see me as like a person and not a number which one am i gonna feel like people professors students are like personally invested in one another and I think that that came down to the Cal State Fullerton. Um, and as a commuter, it's so convenient because it is a commuting school, really. That's why there's so many parking spots and so many of them disappear. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Cal State Fullerton is really the, the place that I, I have, I'm super happy with. And I'm so grateful that I picked this school. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the reason I chose Cal State Fullerton is just the proximity with it. Um, I'm a very family oriented person and I couldn't, you know, just travel out of state or out of country to go to college. Um, I really, uh, really like the proximity. And even though I do commute, um, you know, it's, it's more about than just being in proximity. It's uh, the experience I've had at Cal State Fullerton is one of the best. Like, um, I'm part of the philosophy major and the policy department has this thing called Plato's Cave where um, all professors and students is like, you'd go into the lounge and it's just a very great environment where you could talk to professors, talk to students and really have engaging conversations. And you know, Cal State Fullerton provides so many like of those types of interactions that I wouldn't choose any other college if I could choose again. Greg, I couldn't agree more with you. I, Cal State Fullerton, for me, when it came to choosing colleges, I got accepted to 
a wide variety of colleges and I had a hard time choosing. But when I took the tour at Cal State Fullerton, I don't know, I just, something about being on the campus, I just fell in love with it. I couldn't get enough of it. I thought it was so huge. So I was like, how the heck am I going to get around this campus? But then I was like, the more and more I was able to go on campus. And then when I was driving, I was like, I can't believe I'm going to school. Like, this is so cool. Um, it, right when I got there, I was like, all right, I'm a college student. This is it. And then uh, people are just so welcoming. There's so many great relationships and so many great opportunities that you can create at Cal State Fullerton. Honestly, people are there to help you. I, I just can't say it enough because it's just they, they want the best for you. So whatever you do, they offer so many resources that you can do, such as tutoring and all that, which we'll probably get into another webinar when it comes to academic life. But just even socially with like what we talked about in our last webinar with Discover Fest and ways to get connected, ways to get internships and all that. It's just, it's such a nice, I couldn't, I just sometimes I'm speechless because I just like, I can't even get all this. I can't believe that I'm getting all this stuff out of one college. Sometimes it's overwhelming, but it's kind of a good way of being overwhelmed because they're just offering so much. So just such a welcoming and loving environment. So I, that's why I just went with Cal State Fullerton. Awesome. And I think mention, you mentioning all the different types of opportunities that you've been able to take advantage of. I'm thinking of you all taking advantage of the opportunity to be an orientation leader. So if anyone wants to share why they wanted to become an orientation leader or why they became one, then I think that'd be great for them to hear also. It's a real, there's a lot of really good similar opportunities out there too. Definitely. I'll answer that one. So I remember, so you have to do, um, there was a day where you had to go for orientation and choose your classes. So you would get a tour. I know it's all virtual now, but before, um, I still remember the exact same day, um, who my orientation leader was because you get assigned an orientation leader and they show you around campus. They help you. Um, they stick with you throughout the day. And I still remember mine definitely made my experience way better. Um, she was very sweet. I also had um, another one come and help me as well. And that's the thing that stuck to me the most was that she wasn't my orientation leader, but the fact that she um, made it like acted like she was our my orientation leader for my group. And she helped me a lot personally that really stuck to me. And I wanted to be the same thing she was. So I told myself that I wanted to be the same to do the same thing. I want to help people as well feel more comfortable here on campus. Um, I want to be that person they can turn to whenever there's someone new or whenever anybody has a question. That's definitely why. Um, also, it has great opportunities and I definitely recommend any of you if you'd all like to um, join when you just need to apply for the position. Yeah, and going off of what Val said about helping people, um, I was a link crew leader in high school, which is pretty much like a smaller version of an orientation leader. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed being that face that people recognized and saw around campus and like just being that helping hand when they need it. So if, if, you know, helping people is something you're interested in, I definitely recommend being an orientation leader. Not only do you help all these people that need you, but like you, you gain this com camaraderie with your uh, fellow orientation leaders. And these are some of the greatest people I've ever met, TBH. So, um, yeah, so keep an eye out in like, I think October, September is when um, signups start going around. So if you want to be an orientation leader, check us out. I'll share as well. So um, I was an orientation, or, uh, orientation leader two summers ago, or last summer. Um, and at first, Wait, where was I going with this? Um, oh, okay, so the reason why I became an orientation leader was because um, for my orientation, I didn't really have like a good experience. Um, I was the only math major between among a whole bunch of bio majors. So I was just like by myself. And then um, I think my orientation leaders weren't even like part of my major. So when I went through that, I was kind of like, I, I want to help fix this. I want to help those that don't feel welcome feel welcome so um 
I decided to become an orientation leader also because I did it in middle school just like Sammy did. Um, and so then I became an orientation leader and now I work as a student coordinator. So I help a lot more in changing the program and training all these beautiful orientation leaders. So that's the reason why I became an orientation leader. I would just say um, I was kind of fascinated with how people were able to help other people. I want, first of all, I love the polos. Unfortunately, we don't have our polos right now, but I loved the polos and I loved how we were able to get split up into groups. And I don't know, it just the welcoming factor of just the Titan orientation programs was just so welcoming. I can't even say it enough. I don't know how else to say it because they, yeah, like Sammy said, these people right here and plenty more they've become like my second family it's cool to see them on meetings on fridays especially now since everything that's virtual um it's cool to just get that kind of um, breath of fresh air with just seeing these people who are also going through the same thing as me and then also with titan orientation programs we were able at least for me i was able to kind of learn more about cal state fullerton and the stuff that i really didn't know of how cal state fullerton came to be I was able to grasp that information just by being an orientation leader. So I think it's just so cool. It's also great just to see, uh, be that person, kind of that, like that light at the end of the tunnel, um, or like that guide that, you know, if you need more information, we're here. That's why we're doing this webinar with you guys. That's why we're here. And yeah, I, I guess it's just, it's always great to help people. So I, that's why I joined. Awesome. And we do have a question. Thank you all for sharing why you became an orientation leader. It really warms my heart. And I'm so happy I get to work with you all. Um, I do have one question for Greg. If they're a criminal justice major and they wanted to ask about the Criminal Justice Student Association and want to know if there's an email so that they can get to. And so he might be dropping that in the chat right now. Yeah, if anyone has any major specific questions they'd like to ask or if they want to drop in the chat, what they plan to major in or what your academic college is. We're really curious to know that as well. Um, when, once students do get to come on campus, what are some things that they should make sure to do when, during the first week of being on campus? Um, actually, I can kind of answer that. I think a good thing is just to take it all in. It's, it's a big campus, but it'll feel smaller in time. And then um, if you have time before your classes, try to get a get to know get a feel for what the campus is get to know where everything's at like what uh, where the colleges are at and then get to know the acronyms as well because the acronyms come handy especially when it comes to looking at your schedule um and like yeah just take it all in go through the library a couple times or go walk somewhere by the gym or walk somewhere by the um, student rec center but student union, just kind of get a feel for what the campus is like, so then you know where you're going. And me personally, my first week um, as a freshman, I kind of established my study spots already. Like that might come like way later for some of y'all, but I really like um, the third floor of the library because it's super, super quiet. But if I'm with a group, I like the second floor, or I like. Um, the little desks that they have at the TSU, the Titan Student Union. So um, yeah, I personally, I'd like to establish study spots. That way I know like, okay, I study best here. Um, this is where I can go to do my thing. <laughs> yeah. Cool, that study abroad link for programs is in the chat right now. So I recommend clicking on that link and pulling it up on your computer because I think for now we're gonna wrap it up. But like I said, if you have any other questions, um, you could definitely DM us on our Instagram or you can email the orientation leader email, look through our fre frequently asked questions um, on the orientation website. And we'd love to help you out through any of those modes of communication. And of course, any of our orientation leaders uh, that are here today and also doing other things like podcasts or student discussion groups, uh, we'd love to help you there too. So we're really thankful that you all were here with us today. Thank you so much for coming to our second Tuffy's Top Tips webinar. Like I said, this will be uploaded to YouTube in about a week if you want to refer back to any of that information. Um, we hope that it was really helpful for you. Um, 
there are some more questions being answered in the chat. So there's some helpful links there if you want to grab those before we sign off. But again, thank you. Thank you so much for coming to our webinar. We hope to see you at the others. The registration links can be found in the bio of our Instagram and hopefully in some emails coming up soon. So look out for all that fun stuff. Definitely let us know if you have any questions, okay? Thank you all so much for coming. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Thank, thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank, thank you all for you. joining.